So the materials that we need for today's video are uh, watercolor paper, um, either 100 or 140 pound. Uh, watercolor paper is the best. Um, we need the scotch tape to use for the attaching the outline onto the uh, to the watercolor paper. We're going to be using um, 0 0.1 either a Pigma Micron pen or a Statler pen. Um, they're both uh, work equally as well. The uh, mechanical pencil, uh, they're the ones that like the Bic type ones that you can use uh, to trace the outline onto using your graphite paper. And graphite paper to uh, put underneath your outline, which then uh, gives you the impression onto your uh, watercolor paper. Um, the other way you can do the outline, tracing the outline, is to actually use a window if you don't have the graphite paper. And you would then stick your outline that I'm giving you onto the window first and then hold your paper, your watercolor paper, over top of that, tape it onto the window and then just use your pencil and trace the outline onto your watercolor paper with the pencil. If you did not receive an outline, um, there's one in the there's a link in the video that if you press on that link, you can get a copy and download a copy of the uh, of the outline and the finished product. Okay, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the video that we're doing on pen and ink at the BOAA. Um, today, we're going to be doing a project on the Oriental poppy. It's going to be suitable for anybody that wanted to start uh, to learn pen and ink, or it's also suitable for my little more advanced people that's been in my classes before. So the first thing I want you to do is you've, you've been given an outline and you've been given a copy of the finished uh, project. So what I'd like you to do is make sure that you trace um, from the outline that I've given you, and you can do that in several ways with the graphite paper, uh, you put your outline on top of your watercolor paper, put your graphite paper in the middle, and then trace um, over the outline. It should not be any darker than what I've displayed here. If you have it too dark, then your pen won't cover over the, your marks, and it won't look right. So that's how I'd like you to trace it. If you don't have any graphite paper, you can also use a window and just put your outline, tape your outline to a window, Put your watercolor paper on top of that and then trace with a pencil on top of your watercolor paper. Okay, so we've got the tracing all done. So now let's move into the start of the inking. So the first step is going to be to ink now all of your lines that you've got traced here. So I'm just going to start and I'm just going to start with my pen. This will get you used to using your pen. And just go carefully. Same as if when you are tracing, I want you to trace it carefully. Trace everything that I've given you on your outline so that you've got it all down pat. And then now we're just going to re-outline in the ink all of the line, the major lines that I've given you. This way we've got everything covered. And then we'll start in with our inking. Make sure that you're not holding your pen too tight. You should, your pen should be nice and light in your hands. And also make sure that you move your paper around as you go because you should always be pulling the pen towards yourself. It gives you a nicer line. So you'll find me that I'm moving my paper upside down, sideways, wherever I need it to be comfortable for me doing the outline. And I'm going to come in and do the flower.
Okay, there's the basic flower, the two flowers started. So I'll let you finish your own, the rest of the outlining. You can see how I've done it now. So I want to get started now on a flower. So what we need to do is in pen and ink, the, we're creating the shapes by using the difference between the light and the dark. So the light being the, the white paper, the watercolor paper, the dark being our ink strokes. So we need to start sort of in the center or where things are overlapping. So on this top flower here, I'm going to start with the, um, the center of what would be the poppy. And it is just little tiny circles. And we're just going to fill in this little section right here with the tiny circles. And in this very little corner, any place you get little triangles, we're just going to sort of fill that in a little darker so that we have a nice, because that would be our deepest shadow area, is any of these spaces like this. So once we've got the center established, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving out from the center. So let's work on, we'll, try, we'll do this petal first. So this petal is coming up from the center and it's going up in the direction here. So I'm going to turn it upside down. If you're working with a photo, make sure you turn your photo upside down as well. I'm going to put my pen down on the line that I've traced here. And I'm going to pull up some lines up through to give me my a fanned out sort of dimension, what that petal is like. So if I fan it out as I'm going through, it gives me an idea where to put some more strokes in. I always start with my pen on the line. Go very light. Don't, don't go heavy with your pen. You need to be just barely caressing the paper. And then start and just pull up some strokes. And you've got some basics started there for where you're, where you're starting your <clears throat> the direction of your lines. So then just follow it through and just fill in some strokes. They don't come all the way up to the top because we need to leave the, the white at the top is going to be where the highlight is or the sun would be hitting onto that petal. And you want to make it dark enough on this edge along in here that we have this white area here which is the top of the outside petal. So we need to bring in some shadow to create this petal. And then just make sure you turn your paper slightly so that your lines you're pulling towards you. Not all the same length, make sure you vary the length of them. Have some shorter ones down the bottom because that's going to give us some more depth down to the bottom and then bring some longer ones as they come up through. And just keep going until you've got that petal done. And see how thin my lines are and that is because that I am keeping my pen very light just barely touching the, the surface of the paper and then I can keep it up. I'm going to make a little shadow area along in here. This little area here is where the petal has folded over so I'm going to make that a little shadow area just by putting almost like a little scribble in there to make that. And this outside edge along here, I'm going to leave white. The reason I want to leave that white is because this petal here is coming underneath it and coming out this way. So we'll move on and we'll do this petal. So now the same way, you've got a little dark corner down in here. So let's take it nice and dark. And then pull out some lines that are coming in the direction of the way that petal and it's it's on a roll it's got a slight roll to it so it's moving as we go up and bring out your petals you got your lines for that petal and we're going to stop because that's the next petal there we have another triangle space here so let's just fill in that little triangle space again do not go all the way out to the edge of your petal Stay within. The majority of the strokes we want to take from the line that's created by this petal here that I've just redone again. 
So if you redo your line, it gives you a bit a darker space to start from. <clears throat> and then just pull out your strokes. They're all just slightly curved. Turn your paper. And then pull out some more. I notice my strokes are not all the same length. I've got some short ones down along in here. I can actually come sort of along that line again to emphasize it and then just pull out a few more. Now if you want, you can bring it the other way now and because we have a roll in this petal, we can just bring a few just from this outside edge. They're not going to connect with our other lines, but they're going to give us the impression that that flower petal is rolling over. Wouldn't do too much more than that. Okay, now that's got two petals, so now you can see we have a nice light area against this dark petal. So let's move up into this next one, which is here. <coughs> I'm gonna turn it upside down. And now I wanna start at my dark center, and this petal is going to take in this whole area here. So we're gonna have some that's gonna come straight up through here. And bring it that way. Now when I'm working with my pen, my elbow is on the table and I'm supporting the weight of my arm so that I'm basically just moving my, my fingers and my wrist is supported on the table as well. That gives you a nice steady base and allows you to take nice light strokes. If you don't have that support in your arm, you're going to have, have a lot heavier strokes and you won't be able to achieve this nice, light, delicate look that you're striving for. Once again, I have a nice triangle here, so that'll be a dark area. Some of these ones I'm going to take closer to the edge because it's further back. Now this little piece is another roll back, so it's going to come like this. So wherever you have a dark area, if you notice we have a dark area here from this petal, and I'm wanting to create a roll area in this, in this little tiny area, you always need to leave a white section to separate the two, this dark and this dark, so that we can separate them. If I didn't do that, this would all run together and we wouldn't even see this little area right here. So I can bring in this as well and emphasize that. So then I can move on and move over to this petal. And this one is another rounded one. So let's just work on this inside one first and bring out some. Once again, I'm starting on the line and pulling out. And if you notice, I'm not going all the way over to this outside edge that I lined. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white there. I'm gonna bring all of these strokes in. And again, I have a dark area here, so let's just leave this a little bit later on that edge. And then I'm gonna move down in, so that's the top part of that rounded petal. I'm gonna move down into this corner and move up. The hardest part of this project with the poppies is going to be the flowers, and it's gonna be separating the idea that we have to separate each one of those petals. So when you're working on it, don't constant, don't look at the whole, the item as a whole. You're just going to concentrate on one petal at a time and work your way through. And that way it won't look as confusing as what it may do when you look at the whole project to start with. And it's easy to do, just take it one step at a time. 
Okay, so that's got that area done. If we want to make it, for those of you that have a little more experience, if you want to make some nice little rolls in here, um, remember how we did the ruffles on some of the other projects? We can do the same thing here just by creating a little dark area and then making it, taking it down and it gives us that little roll, makes it look like it's a little more ruffled. So now we have this area here coming out. So again, I'm starting. This paddle, the direction that I want to go with is this direction, basically straight up. So again, my pen comes down, leave a white area on the edge. And you can take this one up fairly close. Make sure you've got your darkness down in the bottom area where it's connecting to the other petal. And just take it up through. And again, leave a white area on this side. So we're just going to continue and we're going to fill in. Now we've got a dark triangle here and a dark triangle there. So let's just fill that little area in. It's deep down within the petal, so it would be fairly dark. And then bring up this shadowed area. And if I leave this area white, we're going to lose these two petals. We need to distinguish this petal from this one, so I'm just going to bring a darker area right in along the edge of that petal. And then that's all that's needed there. This one is now, because this is one extra petal, one of the extra side of that petal. So let's just bring some nice long ones up. Start at the bottom. Stroke your way up through. Okay, so we have a little area in here that is going to be another little dark triangle. So let's just fill that in. And if you're not sure what area I'm talking about, if you refer back to the finished one that I've given you, you'll see on there where I've done the, uh, the lights and the darks and where those little triangles are. Now we've got this outside paddle, which is here. So let's just pull from this line, make some nice long ones coming out. And we need to make it darker right along that edge. So I'm gonna start and I'm just going to work my way and I'm going to pull in some short ones and I'm going to pull in some long ones. So don't get any picket fences, meaning that I don't want all of the strokes to be the same length. If you do that, it's going to look, it's not going to look natural. Uh, we want to have some variation in there. So you see, I can also bring these ones. I can emphasize these ones on the outside here a little bit too. And I can just bring a little bit along in there. The main dark area that we want is to separate here, this petal, from this rolled petal. So we need to bring our lines in that way. So this is another dark area, another little triangle. So let's just fill in that little triangle and then bring some more out. These strokes are basically just coming straight out from your petal and coming out until we get up to here and then we can start angling a little further. So now I'm going to start and bring it up on a slightly different angle. And you see how I sort of go a double stroke along there and along the edge of that outline. And then it gives me a platform to be able to start from and continue. Now, if you don't get your strokes all the way in, and this is beginners will leave an area like this because they're afraid of getting in close to that line. So what you do is then you come back and clean up your line. So do a double line 
and then just come back in and add a few more little strokes to fill in because we don't want any white areas left and it's just a matter of some little strokes so we'll finish in that area for you and then we have another one here and just bring that out now if I turn it around I want to bring in I've given you some outline areas here to emphasize a little bit so let's just emphasize a little more of those ones and bring them darker and bring them down in. and that just gives a little bit of interest a little more interest to there so we got one petal left and we've got this this poppy done so when you're using my reference one always keep the reference at the same angle as what you're working with so that you've got it in the right perspective for when you're trying to fill in your strokes. Now, again here, I've got a dark area here, which I want to leave, and but I want to leave a white area here. So I am purposely leaving a small white area right in there so that I can separate that one petal. Otherwise, if you don't, you've got them all running together. This area right in here. We've got the dark area from the petal here, mm -hmm. but I want you to leave now a nice white area right along in here. So I'm pulling in, leaving about two pen widths to leave that nice little area along in there. Now I'm going to turn it upside down again because now I want to bring this is the bottom where it's coming off of the stem. So this is going to be on an angle as well. So if you notice I'm bringing the center part is coming up straight. The rest of these ones are all going to fan out and come up from this bottom line. And they're going to come basically right up to this roll. This, this petal has rolled over and has come back down. So. Let's just fill in that. And then I'm just going to bring it back and then I'm going to bring in some from the bottom. Just this way. Actually, no. I think we'll do it this way. It'll be easier for you to just pull in some. see what it looks like. Now we don't have it quite yet because I don't like we've got too much uh, of the same tonal value right here so now I'm going to just pull in some darker ones and what that's going to do from this line is it's just going to finish up and give us that nice rolled petal. See the difference it makes when you add enough darkness in there that you've got that nice shape coming through. The last part we have is this part over here and I'm just going to turn it again and I'm going to bring some out because we have another little tiny roll here which is again creating some nice interest so let's just pull out some strokes because the petal is now coming here it's the last part of it it's just tipping and coming down and I just want to bring in these strokes there. So that's pretty well got that flower finished up for that one. And that's your first one done. Do you want to move on to this one? Okay. So once again, now this one here, this flower petal is uh, a lot open for, it's more open. So we're able to see the little center, um, like a little cone, a little hat, like a, almost like a little acorn shape. So let's start off and we'll do the circle in the center. And then these are, we want to make them little turns as we come. So make it look like a little cushion. That would be the easiest word, I guess. So it's like a little tufted cushion because we want to make it look like it's three-dimensional. So it's coming up and around into the center, which is what's going to give us this outside area. 
Then I'm going to bring some extra little strokes just to emphasize, just from that little center circle out. And that's going to what to bring that area, it's going to sink that area down in farther, which because the darkness recedes, so this dark area is going to look like it's pushed down in and it's going to give us a little, a little more of a cushion effect onto there. Then we're going to bring in some nice little strokes along in here. I've given you those on your outline, so just ink those ones out. That's where the little antenna parts are coming out, the little stamens. And then we're going to put some circles out here. The centers of the poppies are, are quite full and quite a, there's a lot of the little stamens out and around and you can add some little darkness in between each one of them to just give a little bit of a more concentrated effect in there. You can actually do these as little spirals if you'd like so that they're automatically darker just by circling in and spiraling into the center. And then we're going to fill in all of these little areas in here with dark which is then going to, because that would be in the recesses of the petal, so that would be the nice little dark areas in there. Fill that all in. And you can make some more darkness in there, right against the, um, where the little hammock shape, the little cushion shape is, just darken that around in there. And just put some little scribbles. And that's darkening in that area now. And then to finish that little area, we're just going to pull out some strokes. And I'm going to make this area dark. And I'm going to turn it and pull out some more. So now we can work into this area of the petal. So all of the strokes are going to start from our little squigglies lines. So bring all those ones up and they can come up, turn my picture around, and they can come right up to the edge here. The reason I can bring them up to the edge is that I'm going to make all of this area is going to be dark. So this is another one of those folds where it's made a nice ruffle. So we'll just make that into a fold. And then we have another area over here that's going to become a fold. There, so you see by putting the little dark lines in around there, it's brought out our little stamens and created our petal shape. So now let's move over to this area. So we have a white area along the edge here and our petal is coming this way. So let's bring up our lines again from our outline line. Put your pen on the outline and then just pull it towards you. Again, try and stay light and don't, you know, I want a white edge left on this side and I want a white edge left on that side. And I can bring the odd one up, up through. I need another little dark fold in here. And then we're going to have another dark fold over here. And then the rest of these lines are going to again come up from the bottom. And with your white line left along the edge right here, then you can leave 
and then you can have your nice dark on the outside and it's just going to make a nice effect. I come into this one, I'm going to darken in here. Now I've lost my outline for that petal, so I'm just going to re-ink along there so that I can re-establish it and then bring it up through. Okay, so let's have a look right side up so we can have a look at it. So it's looking fairly nice in through here. We need to establish now the rest of this. So I'm going to just do a little extra right in here. I like to have that a little different. There we go. Now I'm going to turn it upside down and we're going to work on this petal. So again, put your line on and make yourself some orientation lines. So just pull in some so that you have an idea of what direction you're going to take all your strokes. And then just come back in, start at the bottom and just pull some strokes up through. The pens we're using are uh, a 01, so they're a fairly fine pen, and uh, they should give you a nice, a nice thin line. If you're getting uh, a really dark line, then you're pushing too much, you're using too much pressure, and you basically just need to, you're just base, barely touching the paper. So if you can try and do that and stay nice and light, and you've got pen and ink well under control. And then always remember to work from the line. It's easier if you work from the line than it is to try and leave it. So we got that one done. Now we move over to here. Now I have a dark area here. So I don't want to take all of this in that darkness. So I'm going to leave myself again a little white line. So I've overemphasized it right now so that you can see what I'm talking about. And come up through. Leave a white edge on the top. When you get into this little corner, just make it a little bit darker right on your outline only. And then you can just bring some of these up in through. So turn it back around so I can see it right side up and I can get my orientation and see if there's anything else I need to change. Nope, that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to work on to this petal, which is similar to what we did over here. And we have a petal that is rounding, it's coming from the center and then rounding up and around. So I'm going to start here, the center part, which is basically straight up through, I'm going to draw a line up through, straight, and then the rest of these ones are going to fan out, again all starting at the bottom line, and coming up through. And that's what's going to give us our shape. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Start my lines. And they're all curving out to follow that petal. Do I have here? Yep. Oh, that's my outside. So there's my first, my basics of that one. So now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to add some more down, some more darkness at the bottom. Always start your pen down and then just stroke it up. All of the lines that we're using in this one, this project, are just going to be the contour lines, meaning that they're following the shape of the petal or they're following the shape of the leaf. And it's one of the easiest ones to strokes to start with. Now 
as I come along. I'm, st I'm still coming up the side, but I'm following my outside outline and bringing it up through. I'm going to leave the top open. I'm not putting strokes in there. Then I'm going to work my way back down through. Just like that, in which case I'll take a line coming down from it, a little bit, and then we have the rest of the petal coming this way. So my strokes came up through. So this is the remainder of this petal. We've got a, it, the petal is coming and it's curving and coming around like this. So this is the same petal, so the strokes need to come in the same direction as what we finished down here. So these strokes are going to continue up through and to finish off that edge of the petal. So again, come back, double link your edge, and then pull in some more. Okay, so we have now just two petals left and we got this flower finished. So, this goes here. so now this one again is coming around on a circle. We have a little triangle shape in here, a little area that I'm just going to darken in. Okay, so I've darkened in this little area here. It's not part of the petal, it's the background. And uh, I don't want it, I want it to stand out to separate these, these this petal from the bottom one. So I want to make sure we have that, that little area darkened in. This petal now is coming, and it's coming from the bottom here, where it would join onto the stem, and it's coming up this way. And it's another one that's going to fan out. So let's just bring some shapes in from here, just our orientation ones again. So that we've got them coming in the direction. we. Now this bottom part, I want to curve the opposite direction. So I've got that as a basic to start with. So now I've got some marks down that I know what direction I'm coming from. Now again, watch because we have a dark area folded there, so make sure so. Always leave wider than I'm leaving a nice wide light white line there on purpose so that you can see and we don't get that lost. And I'm just coming up and finishing along the edge of here. Now if we need to, we can darken, come back and darken these petals. Everywhere that they overlap is where we're going to have our darkness in. So now I have my dark area with my light along the edge of it. So now I can come back and start on my line again and pull out some dark. And if you don't think your darkness is coming out far enough, just add some more strokes into there and just fill it in a little more if you need to. Now again, I've got another area here where I need to have, this is my dark, goes all the way to the edge, but I need to leave a white. So I'm going to leave a nice big white area there to start with, so that I don't lose that. I'm going to leave that nice white area, and then stroke in through, finish off the rest of these. The odd stroke can come all the way up to the outside edge, but don't... Um, 
Don't take them all out to the outside edge. sure you keep angling it out. Now down the bottom again, remember we have our white our, our black triangle down here, so we want to leave a white edge against the, the dark. And I'm just going to put my pen down and just quickly pull out some lines here. Now, if this white area is too dark, if you left, I always say leave more white than you need, and then you can just come back and clean it up. So the, reason, the way I'm going to clean it up is I'm going to come from the dark side and I'm just going to re-ink the dark line until I just have just a, about a width of the pen left of your white. And then that is just going to emphasize that and just make it pop out for you. Okay, now one more. Last petal. So on this one, uh, it's, it's one large petal, they're just coming sort of basically all the way around. We have a fold back area along in here, and we have a nice, we have our dark shadow area here for the background. So I'm, this time I'm going to start and just pull some out, um, push away from myself rather than pull towards myself. And I'll see if I can get some nice angles coming into here for this petal, for our strokes. So I'm making it look, if you think uh, about a petunia, when you see the petunia flowers, how they all sort of fold out from the center, that's what we're trying to achieve in here. So if we bring these around, and they all need to come and make it look like it's coming in, in a wrapped area. So that's given me some nice directions to start from here. And then, um, so we're going to start and pull. And I want to leave a white area along the edge of here. The reason being that we have a dark, this dark petal is coming here. And if I take my darkness and start on that line that I've got there from my dark, and pull it forward, we're gonna lose this petal. It's gonna run it all together. So I'll, I'll leave a bigger area here again. I'm gonna leave it. Start like that so that we have a, a, def, a definition between the one petal and the other. And if you think it's too much later, we can always come back and re, re just adjust it. The only place we need to really worry about this is right on the bottom because our black has come through all the way up to here. So from here through to this area, this whole area here, we need to make sure we leave a white area along the top edge. some this way to go around this roll in that little petal. Add some darkness, create some shape. Start back here again. And I'm 
always starting back. I don't start in here. If I start my stroke down here, I'm going to end up with it looking like it's broken and it's not going to look right. So start within what you've already got established with your dark and then just bring them forward. Remember the direction that you've started. You've got your little direction. So these ones here are basically coming straight down. And then I'm going to start curving it in the opposite direction. And now I've got a nice curve here coming. So again, I want to, I've still got the dark established there, so I want to leave a little white line. paper if you need to, to get it, so that it's easier for you to turn and get the strokes where you need them to go. Now when I get up to here, I can take now the dark, I can start to take my darkness back in. And the reason I can do that is because I have a nice light area here with this part of the petal. I've got my outline, so now if I emphasize this, and bring my dark right along the edge of that, what it's going to do is pop out this section of that petal and create a nice shape for us. And that's going to continue all the way up through. Another dark triangle. We've got two light petals coming here and here. So let's make a nice little dark triangle right in there. And what that's going to do is help us separate and create some nice shapes. And it's going to give us that three dimensional look that we're wanting to create. Almost done this one. Now I can add a little bit more interest here to this outside just by bringing in a few darker strokes from the outside. Um, if you want to create um, some more of the ruffles, you can. Just bring it in a little bit, create a little ruffle, or just the additional strokes along here will help create some effect as well. Don't go overboard on this. Um, you can think you're doing it nice, but then you'll end up with it being too much. So you can always do too much. Always do less, and you can always add more darkness or more strokes as you need to, but you can't take it away. So um, err on the light side, and then you shouldn't have any problems. So that's pretty well got that flower. Oh, we got one little bit here. This is this little rollover, so we want to keep the top nice and white. And I just want to bring a few little tiny, just almost... Um, put your pen down as if you're making a dot, and then just leave it 
as that. Yeah, just a, ever slightly little bit of a upward pull on it and that's going to give us just a little bit of a shape for the bottom. Turn it back around so that I can have a look at it and I'm fairly happy with that. So that's got our two flowers finished. Okay. Okay, so this is a, a finished bloom. So the petals have all fallen off and on the poppies they end up with this little acorn shape again. So it's like we did in here in the center part here except that it's a little we can see more of it so let's just bring some shapes in around Do that. I can bring in some extra little pieces in between again to make the center look like it's depressed into there and then I'm going to bring up some Again, from, from the bottom line here, this is like the seed bulb that's being formed. So let's just bring some strokes in the round that makes it look like it's round. So we'll add some darkness on the one side, bring it up through, reverse the direction of this curve so that it's coming the other direction, and bring some on that side as well. And it does have a little, this little cap is, is a literal little cap. So let's just bring now some from the, from it down. So that we just have a little bit of a, just a little bit of detail into there. Okay, so then that is that little area done. It's got like a little stem part that there are attaches to and then we're working down into the stems. So we've got stems and the leaves now to do. So wherever the stem, I'm going to move back over to here, wherever the stem uh, comes from the flower, we want to have a little area that we're going to darken underneath there. Now again, because I have a dark area on this petal, I want to leave the white area on my stem. So I'm going to have a like a little white spot through the center. I'm going to darken off the one side and a little bit on this side. So both sides are going to be darker and the center is going to be left light which is what is going to then now give us the three-dimensional effect that we want to create. And that's basically all there is to that stem. The leaves up here, um, we're just going to, again, I said all we were doing on this one is a simple leaf. Uh, I want to bring in some vein shapes. just for the center vein that's coming through. The rest of the strokes coming out of here are just going to be long strokes, just like we've done on the petals, but they're gonna follow the length of the leaf. So I want to have it darker. They're starting at the petal, coming out, and they're just following the length of the leaf. Those of you who've done leaves with me before, we've done cross hatching, we've done other things. So if you'd like to add more um, detail to, a leaf, to these leaves, then by all means, go ahead. You can add your cross hatching if you want. You can add the shading where the veins come out from the center vein. But for simplicity's sake on this one, I'm just gonna have them straight lines. Now some of these, this leaf here does not have a, yes it does. This one here has a rollover which I didn't trace in. There we go. So now it created a, a roll in that leaf. So the underneath part, like our petals, is needs to be darker.
Oh man, this is gonna come up. Yep, and that's it for those for that leaves up there. These ones, again, the stem comes from here. You can take your lines nice and long. These are fairly straightforward. So wherever you have something that is behind another object, such as we have here, we need to have it darker where it would be in shadow from underneath. So make sure you have that little area there dark. And then put the two lines. Amazing how much you can hear, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so whenever you're not talking, uh, uh, I'll have it muted, some background music or something. Like that. Okay. Here's another one where we have a fold. So I have an area to define that petal. And I want to leave a little bit because this leaf is coming off of the stem. So let's just leave a little indication here, a little white area right in there that is an indication that we've got a nice little separation coming off. And we want to darken this area where the fold is. Now, because I have, this would be where my veins are coming up, so my veins can come and be put in like that. And I want to bring in a little bit along the bottom, which would be from the vein, but I want to leave the top white that's going to be my separation area. So it gives us a nice definition for that leaf. Now let's move down here. We can finish in this stem. So again, dark where it hits the petal. Now when you're doing stems, you can um, use nice long strokes if you can, 
And what I tend to like to do is just go back and forth. So I start at the top, come down until I stop at the other end of the line and I can just come back and forth and it makes some nice long lines. The other way you can do it is just to add some lines in. Just pull them like we've done all the rest of them. Now this part of the stem can be fairly dark because it is behind the leaf as well as behind this part of the stem. But the strokes should always still be in the direction of the object. In this case our stem is coming this way so always keep your strokes going in that same direction in case you have any white areas that are left that you don't get covered in and then you won't have that looking like it's a have a checkerboard or something. So that's got those stamps done. Now, okay, this one here is now a bud. So this this one here is a, a new flower which hasn't opened yet. So it comes up. And we have the coverings for the flower. So again, I want to bring in the shadow area. I'm going to pull it again from, to myself. It's the easiest way to do it. And then just bring your strokes in from what would be that little leaf area. Up in through. And they can come pretty well up to the top. I'm going to put a slight curve to them as well so that we can get some shape coming into here. So I've curved it this way. Put a darker line there to separate. And that is our little bed done. Our little leaf coverings. Let's just put a, a little dark area in there, bring up about three little strokes, one in the center, one a couple on each side, bring another one here. We don't need a lot of detail into there, just and then bring it down into our stem turn it this way because I have a pedal here. So I want to bring it up from the pedal. Now I haven't done the rest of the zinking yet but you would have done it at the first when you were doing the rest of your outlines. So I'll just quickly put this in now.
So I'm just going to finish in on these stems here now. Feel free to add in some extra little veins if you'd like to. The major impact that we want to get on here is actually the flower, so the little leaves are just some decoration in as well. Now again, I have another fold over one, so the stem is coming here where it's attaching. And then I'm going to make, let's put a few veins in that come like this. And where it comes out of the shadow here is where we want to make it darker to separate that part of the leaf. And this is the underside of the leaf, so let's just bring some strokes up from what would be this, the main stem, the main vein, and leave the top part of it light. And then just pull out to the tip. Now when I'm doing these, I finish them off with watercolor, so they would get the nice watercolor coating on top. And it's just watercolor glazes that I'm using. And it just and then the shadows that I've created with my inking creates the nice shadow effect on the finished product when I get the watercolor added. And that just gives it a nice simplistic look. Okay, we have one more leaf. This is my dark area. Bring in my veins. And then Now this is where you could, if you wanted to put some cross hatching in, for my students that I've had before, the cross hatching would fill in and make the nice shadow. But in this project, I'm just leaving it strictly with the contour strokes, which still gives you a nice job. Now again, pull from your center vein, leave the top. You want to make a nice shadow along this center vein. Turn it so you can get it coming out to the point. Now the very bottoms of these, I just sort of feather it off. I don't, I don't uh, leave a, a straight line along the bottom of the stem. So I'll just bring some strokes coming down. They don't, they don't want to cut it off by drawing a line across the bottom of them. It just fades them off nicely into the into the bottom of the page. So they just have their strokes coming down. One more leaf. Again, it's up against a petal. So we can have a nice dark edge to start with.
redefine the veins if you want to, make them a little more darker so they stand out a little more. Remember when you're doing this roll over the, the underneath part and keep things on an angle. And we can just add, have to add a little more darkness in here, otherwise I'm going to lose that fold over. Just a little more. We'll just bring that out. Okay, one leaf left. Again, I'm going to just leave it rough at the bottom. And just bring things up. Okay, so the last step then is going to be just to look, set it back, put it at arm's distance so you can have a look at it and see what is not defined that you want to have some def more definition in. And I can see right here, I want to add some more right in this area, right in here, where I have, because I'm not seeing this petal here from this, it's blending in a little bit too much. So I'm going to add a little more darkness right along in that edge and right in there just to create a little more definition in there. And then the last thing I want to do is just add some little hairs. And they literally are just little tiny strokes along the stems because the poppies have nice hairy stems. So we'll just add some into there. All the way along. It's just little, little tiny strokes. We could put them in through the center as well, but they really don't show up the same way, but you could. Just add a little, and because they're, they just sort of stick a little bit from there. But where you really notice them is on the outsides against the dark, dark lines against the white paper, which makes them stand up. And then your eye just finishes in the rest of it, and then you know that that whole stem is, is a hairy stem. Okay, I think we're pretty well finished with this one. 